Hi, and welcome to Technology Take the Heat. I'm your host, Rich Hoffman, and we're coming to you live from the Bold Brave TV network. So again, I'm being plagued with uh, technical issues, but uh, it's not my technician's fault. We're just, um, it's a little bit interesting. Anyway, so today um, I've got a few things we're gonna cover. Um, follow up with Zap Electric, um, but, um, and then we're gonna talk about the copyrights that I just received. I got two of them. Um, this is my second and third. I've been nominated eight times for uh, Mark Hughes, Who's Who in America as a result of my two patents. My, I was then a business owner, copyright for my book. I was a guest speaker, you know, on a um, high profile program with uh, Jim Masters, you know, and who's the narrated every animal show since he was basically 18 on PBS and Barry Schwartz, the producer of Judge Judy. I had two conversations with him before he went internationally to 24 million, et cetera, et cetera. Go to rwhoffman.com and .info. You can see the details on that. Anyway, so um, we're going to talk about a, um, let me go and pull this up real quick. It's going to take me a moment. I apologize for that. Okay. But um, we're going to go to a share screen here in a moment. Now I'm confirming that we have share screen. A minute. So let me go ahead and pause this. Go full screen here. Okay, so now this is the travel that a woman 30 years old was traveling and she's hitting the brakes, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Okay, so all right, so this is where a collision occurred. Now I want you to look that there's no skid marks in this other lane whatsoever. This is a long straightaway. Okay, so the point is, is that um, we're going to talk about really what are the, all the details regarding this accident that occurred in 2016. But um, first off, I need to, um, so hang on a second. I don't believe, let me just pull this up real fast. Okay, am I? Okay, one minute. Share screen. Okay. Oh my gosh, cancel. Okay, so I do not have a share screen. And, yeah, why is this only a window? I'm sorry. I'm going to go right here. Okay, and hit share. Okay, all right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a, this uh, video one more time. Okay, so these are all my my references. Let me get my mouse back down here. Lord God help me. Okay, and so anyway, we're gonna go play this video again. I'm really sorry about this, guys. Okay, so we're gonna go full screen. Okay, now this is on the Monmouth Highway, Highway 194, that's um, west of Monmouth. And this is the tire tracks from a vehicle that was driven by a 30 year old lady who was slowing down, slowing down, slowing down like about 15 miles an hour right here. And then look that there's no skid marks in the other side. Okay. Anyway, so I didn't mean to have my volume up on this, but I was really disturbed because of what I discovered here. Okay. Now, um, this is the um, end result. Um, this is the photograph that was taken. Okay from the, um, what the heck, why is this up? There we go. Okay, so now if you look, this is a four by four, okay? And um, it's extremely beefed up. It's designed to jump off a cliff and keep on going. Why is the left front tire completely sheared off? The entire A-arm, et cetera, okay? And look at the damage to that little neon, okay? Now the neon was actually hitting the brakes for 275 feet, which means it wasn't going very fast at all. But look at the damage done to that truck. Now, before we get into this, what I want to do is I want to um, discuss that we uh, lost a firefighter recently. And um, his name is Bill Gabbert. And um, he's the author or the executive editor and so forth of Wildfire Today. He's written countless articles that have really helped enhance firefighter safety in the wildland aspect, especially. He also has fire aviation, which means he's an air buff like me. You know, I was blessed to work at Columbia Air Attack Base, Chico Air Attack Base, and then past Robles, and basically every um, air tanker pilot knew me my first name. And boy, to have fun with them. And then I was able to fly overhead in the third seat of a Skymaster O2 uh, Skymaster. It's a military version 
of this twin engine push pull plane. And I was able to videotape from the air, you know, and capture the audio of these incredible, you know, footage that they used in Firefighters of the Sky a documentary um, that was on uh, on uh, PBS for years. Okay, but anyway, so I want to really recognize Bill Gabbert. Okay, this gentleman, I mean, he worked, what, 20 years for the Forest Service, another 13 for the National Park Service, and uh, really contributed a lot. And he passed away on the 14th, and apparently he died in his sleep. And there's no better way for anyone to pass away than to simply transition, you know, from the skin bag that we're in, you know, to go forward. Anyway, um, so uh, before we go on much longer, I just want to kind of bring up this right here. Um, we're going to go full screen on this one. Okay, hit play. Come on, baby. Hit play. I'm going to go full screen. Check this out. This was, uh, I just came across this, you know. Talk about taking a stand for another person's life, right? Um, I need to make sure that we're on share screen, Josh, I mean, I'm Mike. If we're not, you freaking tell me, okay? Because I want this video to be seen. And I don't see myself on my video appropriately. So anyway, all right, we're, we're being plagued again by, yes. Um, all right, you know what? I'm going to go and go to a commercial break until we work out the rest of these details because this is not going to work for us at all. So um, yeah, Michael, um, let's go ahead and go to a, a um, yeah, thank you very much, okay? What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation Hi, and welcome back to the Technology Take the Heat. I'm your host, Rich Hoffman, and I'm coming to you live from the Bold Brave TV network. Okay, so one of the things I want to emphasize is that um, I'm not only a certified fire inspector, but a fire investigator, but, you know, a command instructor. But, yeah, we're talking instructor, 16 different curriculums. Okay, and fire investigation, especially when it could involve a murder. And this is what I hate about going to a straight stream nozzle, because when the firefighters go into an incident, they are hydraulically destroying any bit of evidence that might be preserved by having atomized water, which is billions of times the surface area and the cooling effect than a straight stream water, a stream with thousands of gallons, you know, causing more water damage than you know, smoke and fire damage. But the point is, is that, um, you know, it's one thing to have, a, you know, it's a firefighter injured and they go, how can we prevent this? It's another thing to have, you know, one killed you know, that dies, it's like, now we really have to stop 
pull back and figure out what, what caused this May Day. Because if we all stayed at the station watching TV and playing poker like the rest of the rest of you believe, right? No, I'm, I'm kidding. You know that we're heroes, right? Um, that no one would die. But then we have to dance on the edge there, right? And this is because of our commitment for another. And so I want to play this video, which is really cool. Okay, it was on Air TV. I came across it. And um, here's a dog. It's struggling. It, it doesn't have the wherewithal to know to go up the steps to get out. Okay, so and it won't be long before this dog has completely exhausted himself and died. Okay, and drowned. Okay, so we're just going to watch this for a minute. Look, at it dives in, and now he's going to push up, right? Is this crazy? Watch this. This is all kind of video. What an amazing, you know, deal. Now, what does he do? He runs over and takes the stairs. Why? This poor dog was so, you know, we get emotional. We can't even think straight, you know, and it's like, now what, right? And here we have two dogs, two family members. This is why I have lost pause.info is another resource at three in the morning you can say hey i found a dog or i lost a dog and by six in the morning you know because people are frantic they're not waiting for an appointment you know a week from now to get the chip scan to find out who it belongs to what is that week like you know there was a gentleman that uh, flew back from las vegas planning this trip for over a year came back with his family driving a dodge four by four at like five miles a gallon and was searching all throughout paradise the same town that we lost you know, four years ago for a small dog that was gone because the, the, the sitter didn't pay attention to the back door. It got outside and gone. And he had to cancel his vacation while the rest of his family, you know, suffered his absence, tried to have at least part of their vacation, emergency airline flight. Why? Because no one knew that they even knew that there was, there was a lost pet. You see what I'm saying? And um, so this is where lost positive info comes in and say, hey, by zip code, you can... Um, you can go to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll pull this up right now just because we're referring to it. Okay, but it's all about lost pause. Oops, lost, lost pause. Really? I'm having so hard time. Okay, so anyway, so um, yeah, this is international. Any zip code that you have, you just simply list a, a, a lost or found pet, right? Boy, my internet is really slow. Here we go. Come on, baby. Okay, now it's firing up, right? Okay, so, yeah, this is me right here, right? This is all about us. These are some dogs that actually were lost for a little bit, but I haven't been able to promote this, okay? So, um, just go down here. That's Harriet. And we got two of the cats to replace her. You can download the flyer right here like this, okay? And it's a painting that I did that shows this dog who I saved. Lost your pet, found your pet. List your contact information by zip code, reconnect 24 7 at Lost Positive Info, right? This needs to go up in every veterinary place there is. Okay, so let's get out of here. So um, we want to consider what happened during this, this incident. Now, what is the kinetic energy for that left front tire to be sheared off? Okay, um, and then you look at the damage to this vehicle right here. Now, this person that was driving it was considered DOA. Okay, now I contacted the Oregon State Police and said, what the heck's going on here, right? And um, I talked to the top investigator, and um, he basically broke it down. It was simply just a head-on collision. Now, I've been to countless vehicle accidents, and when there's a long straightaway, and you see somebody coming over that hill, right? Okay, let's go ahead and look at this real quick, all right? We're going to go ahead and look at what the long straightaway is. This is 3,700 feet. Okay, I want to measure the distance here from here. Got it? To, oops, this is backwards. I'm going to go ahead and run this back over here. Okay, we're going to go like this, right? Now I'm, I'm parked at the driveway right here, right? Now this is a slight hill right here, and that's what I showed a few minutes ago, okay? That's about 3,700 feet. How fast can that truck go in this straightaway on this back area from Monmouth? And that, yeah, it could have been sealed up. Because see, once they have a, a death, you know, on the highway, they seal off the highway. It's only two lanes, no one ever uses it. What they do, they sealed it up, okay? So now they have to do the investigation. It was down for five hours, but look at that. Okay, that's crazy. Okay, so it's 3,712, whatever. The point is, is that when you look at the video, okay, I'm going to break this down. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where did my video go? Okay, got it. Okay, so this is the eastbound travel, right? So I'm going to go um, again, right? I'm going to go full screen. 
And you're going to see what this woman saw as she's driving over the top. Now, right there, okay, I'm going to go back just a little bit here. What we've got is we've got two skid marks. We've got the start of the left tire here, okay? We've got the start of the right tire right here. And why is she hitting the brakes? And why is she crossing the lane ever so slightly? Okay, so I have a theory about this. But the report says that um, simply that she crossed the line. She was driving erratically. Now, now at this point, okay, she is, is um, I'm going to mute this real quick because I don't want to be heard my expletives because I was really upset about this, right? So she crosses the line and guess what's this? This is 3,700 feet with no skid marks from a truck traveling 120 miles an hour. Okay, easy. Are you with me? I mean, let's look at this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and escape out of this, right? And we're going to look at that picture again, right? Okay, and look at the damage. That sheared that off. No, 4x4, four four, I've been driving 4x4 four four since I was 12. Okay, I had friends that, that had them, lived in the mountains between Yosemite, Tahoe, you know, east of Stockton, San Francisco, and, you know, beautiful area just below the uh, Big Tree State Park and so forth. And yeah, you don't do this to a vehicle unless it's traveling extremely fast to, to pull that off, right? So when we go to Google Maps, right? So now we're going to go and go to Google Maps. And um, where is it? Really? No. Why did I lose it? That's really frustrating. I'm sorry, guys. There it is. Okay, now it came up. Okay, so Google Maps, what we're going to do is we're going to travel all the way down here, right? Okay, now once we zoom in, it'll go ahead and transition where we can actually see what this is, right? Okay, so let's go and get turned around here, right? And so this is the driveway. Let me go back up here. So I'm going to go I'm right here at the, at the driveway right up here. So the collision occurred up here. Got it? Okay, so now what's happening is this is the driveway that I pulled off right there. Now, this was taken in 2012. This is four years later, so this orchard's built up. Look at the visibility in every range, right? Okay, so now we have a uh, we have a hilltop here, and coming in our direction, obviously, in the head-on collision, is 3,700 feet away. Okay, that's crazy. Okay, and um, yeah, so you can go 100, you know, 40 miles an hour at this point, and you can actually cause this damage. Okay, now, what happened was, is that this tire track jumped all the way over here. When these collided left front to left front, essentially, right, it was like, okay, um, the back end of the truck came up and it dropped into this groove right here. And this car rotated um, counterclockwise, obviously, you know, in the same manner. But when you consider the length, right, of the, um, I'm sorry, the length of the, um, of, the, of the skid marks going for 275 feet, how fast can she be going at this point? She was, see, the width of the tires, let's go and pull this up. I'm going to open up this, um, these files here, and we'll look at um, the, um, the width of the tires here, tire tracks. Okay, so um, I hear, right? Okay, so this gets darker and darker in this area. Why? Because she's going slower and slower, and now the full weight of the vehicle is on those tires, making those skid marks. But when you go back to the video, right, we can see that, um, you know, we play this again, right, is that um, she started all the way back here with the skid marks, right about here, right? Okay, there's, where is it, maybe, there it is, right there, got it? So she's hitting the brakes before she can even see what's coming down this roadway right here. Okay. And um, so when I contacted the state police, um, what happened was, is um, I said, okay, what exactly happened here? I want to know what the report was. And here's this top investigator. And he said, yeah, um, that um, the, the car was driven by a misdemeanor warrant of um, person. Okay. And then, it was a passenger who was a woman who had her six-year-old daughter and four-year-old daughter who are now 11 and 13, okay? And um, they'll know who was driving, but they were in the vehicle. All four of them were in the vehicle, okay? And um, so let's go and play this again, give you an idea. And I actually slowed down similar to what she did, okay? But um, she was, you know, driving, you know, pretty fast here. 
And here she's got the skid marks on, 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 on. Okay, and then she crossed the lane. Well, again, where are the skid marks from the truck? There's none. Okay, and that disturbs me because every head on collision I've been to, there's always a second set of skid marks. Okay, um, unless someone fell asleep at the wheel, and then that's different, right? Because they wouldn't be. But I mean, this is broad daylight, 12.50 p.m. on uh, May 16th. Um, 2000, uh, May 15th, rather, 2016. And, um, and the passenger has a felony arrest warrant. Now, when the police got there, they arrested her and they said that the, the guy fled. Now, when you look at the surrounding area, right? Okay, look at this, this whole area. Okay, are you with me? But where are you gonna flee, okay, that you can hide? There's no part to hide here without maybe hiding in the bushes right here. Well, I have a theory about that too, okay? And um, I got to see what time it is on the hour. So we're 9.33, okay. Well, 12.33 or time. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm going to have to jump into a theory here, okay? Into my theory. But, um, you know, you need, you need to know that I'm certified to train and certify fire investigators. So they can do their job. They go to a scene. There's a dead body, right? And there's a bullet hole to the head. Now, the evidence has been destroyed by a straight stream nozzle, but we're not going to talk about that. Yeah, good job, New York. Go back to 1910, okay? Combination nozzle is the greatest invention. Why? Because it can go wide-angle fog, atomize the water, incredibly efficient at, at um, heat uh, absorption, knocking down a fire in seconds on 100, the water. Okay, that a straight stream requires, or you can go to straight stream, and now we can attack the ceiling and the walls of a flashover and get the heat out of that in order to save our lives. If we go to a fog on a flashover where the entire room is heating up, and all of a sudden it bursts into flames, okay, this is where firefighters get hurt really bad, okay? And, um, and so you do not want to have a fog. Why? Because a steam burn is far worse than a dry heat burn. Why? Because it... Um, Dry heat burn is, um, in fact, um, it has, doesn't have the exothermic reaction of steam condensing to a liquid. So it takes energy to go from a liquid to a steam. And then when you go from the steam to a liquid, owie, owie, that's right. Because now you have a steam burn on top of the heat of the water. It's above 212. We're at 212. Okay. So we need to have a straight stream setting on our fog nozzle. And now we have the same thing as a straight as a, as a straight stream nozzle that we sell. Look at that; it's too funny. That they, you know, have been created. It's been around for decades. But I left in 2000 when I was, you know, discovered the felony embezzlement of public funding. Five years later, working with Chris Dixon, the author and co-author, and Patrick M uh, Mitchell, the author, as president, vice president of the affiliate 120 fire captains working for Department of Corrections, and that. Nine shifts a month is no different than nine shifts every four weeks. Uh, FLSA mandates four week maximum done for any kind of overtime. And there's 13 cycles every 52 weeks. Get it? Nine times 13 is 117. We only work nine shifts a month. That's 108. Yeah, I already had a show on that $450 million owed the federal government, $450 million owed the state government of California. That's $830 million. If we took out $830 million from the budget of California, what would happen? And where would those inmates be since this comes directly from corrections? Yeah, they would now reside with you and you'd be on the street like they are right now. Got it? The ones that they actually get out. Okay, so the thing is, is that um, what really disturbed me about this is they claim that this woman was driving fast enough to shear off, okay, that, um, you know, that, where is it right here, I believe? Shoot, I'm sorry, guys. Okay. So um, to shear off that, okay, here we go, right here, okay. To shear off that wheel. This is the actual article, right, in photo courtesy of Oregon State Police, right? So they got the marks here for the tires and so forth. And yeah, and then they've actually put the axle at the top of this one and marked them both. And there were actually two positions for the left front wheel. This one had oil and water underneath it, so it rinsed off within a week. And then they showed both of them right here because these axles are essentially parallel at this point. Okay, but she's skidding for what 275 feet. Really, how fast is she going? The width of those skid marks re can reveal what? Okay, and they reveal bingo, right? It's going to do the last little bit. 
that she is slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, nearly stopped here. And it hit so hard. And then when she hits, her car is rotated counterclockwise. Now, if she's at this angle like this, like she is, right? And this truck has now got this groove back over here. That means that they hit and they rotated, okay? Now, um, I, um, um, when, I, when I saw this, I saw these flowers there and I heard about this lady and they sealed off the roadway for five hours. I'm going, what the hell is going on here, right? Now, why would she swerve over the line, hitting the brakes the whole way, slowing down to nearly stop, and then be hit on, with a head-on collision and then dead? Now, I asked the, uh, the investigator, I said, I don't believe that she was the one that was driving. I would say she was a passenger. Now, I confronted this guy and I said, why don't you go back to her cell because she's a, a, a felon, you know, with a pending arrest warrant, and put a gallon of water or milk in the middle of the cell and say, pick it up. Now, she picks it up with her right hand, right arm. She's definitely, definitely the uh, driver. Why? Because she has a bruise that goes down her left side, right? Okay. Now, but if she picks it up with her left hand, now she is a what? She's a passenger. And who was the one that was missing? The misdemeanor warrant, okay, that's, um, that's on the run, right? And um, he escaped. How did he escape? How did he get away from there so fast, right? Well, this is a rural area, so it takes forever for the police to show up. But I'm a little concerned about this because this top investigator said that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And he hung up on me the moment that I said, I bet she has bruises from her right shoulder to her left hip. I mean, she was not driving. See, women bruise very easily, and you can't hide that very well, okay? But there's a 30-year-old woman who has a 7-year-old boy and a 9-year-old boy at the time. They're now, what, they're 14 and 16? They're missing mom, okay? So this is my theory, okay? So we're, we're going to back this up right here, right? So now I'm going to say, okay, you go full screen on this, right? God damn, my leg is camped up here. Okay, so what's going on is that now she is approaching a straightaway with no visibility of what's going 130 miles an hour. Driven by, yes, the missing person. Get over that. Okay, now, why would she progress from here to here, right? where that first skid mark is, is back a little ways. So it's really hard to see in this, in this deal right here, right? So there's a left tire, right? And then we have right, I mean the right tire rather, and her right tire is right back here. Left tire, I'm sorry. It's right here, right, where begins the skid. Now, she's in her lane, she's hitting the brakes, and yet she's driving into the other lane. Well, what the hell? She's slowing down. because She has control of the brake, but not the wheel. Key evidence. This is the problem, okay, is that if she has control of the brakes, then really who has control of the wheel? See, they sealed this area off immediately. Immediately it was sealed off, okay? So what I'm going to say is, is that the reason why this top investigator said I wasn't an investigator, I didn't know what I was talking about when I said, go to that woman's cell room and have her pick up a gallon of water. Look at the bruises. What does the medical report show? right shoulder, left hip, or uh, left shoulder, right hip. That's real easy, right? But, but see, the thing about, about um, one thing I want to say, right, about criminals is that they'll do anything to get out of a, um, a charge, right? Now, I'm going to show you a book right here, right? This is written by Tom Lance. Go to full screen for me in a minute, um, Michael. Okay, I don't want people to see this, please. Go full screen on me, partner. All right, so Thomas Lance is a three-time author, 60-year-old man. Okay, and he wrote on the inside of the book right here. Okay, he said to Rich, okay, to one accomplished author, to an up and coming um, um, budding author, a pleasure to meet you. All my best, Tom Lance. Got it? Now, he was my assigned private investigator in which a 35 year old punk came into my jail. 35 year old punk with a third grade education claiming to be Tom Lance. And now, one of the questions I asked, knowing that Tom Lance, had gone through grammar school, high school, two years of college, criminal justice, 14 years as a peace officer, quit the force, became a private investigator, and worked 27 years from the time he was 35 to 62. Got it? I knew that. Okay? And so I asked this, um, this person that said he was Tom Lance on day shift, 
with sheriff deputies that belong to my Elks Lodge, who are my people of integrity, and a 35-year-old punk is impersonating someone my age at 61. Do you see a problem with that? Anyway, so I asked him, I said, how many years experience do you have? He said, 27. 27? That would mean what? That would mean by the time he was at the end of third grade, he'd gone through kindergarten, middle school, or grammar school, middle school, high school, college, and worked 14 years as a peace officer, and then began his career. Do you see a problem with that? See, Sarah Williams was my attorney, and she's both private as well as public defender. And this public defender is fully paid by what? Tax dollars, your tax dollars. Why? Because I'm a retired, medically retired fire captain because I exposed fraud. And that's where my attorney said, it's a $3 million to $5 million case. And the week before my hearing in the year 2000, he said, we're going to reduce it 99% to 30 grand to keep it on the back page of the Stockton Record, not the front page, LA Times, New York Times, and the San Francisco Times. Why? Because I exposed a felony embezzlement of public funding from Department of Forestry Fire Protection and Department of Corrections. And I told my attorney, one of the top 10 attorneys in all of California said, they got to you. You would be randomly killed by a random drunk driver randomly in your driver's door in the next 72 hours. And he hung up on me. When I went to my hearing, I couldn't find him. And I finally found him in a back hallway on a storage level of an administration building where my administrative hearing was. And he was boasting with his best friend who's at opposing counsel. Why? Because they went to school together, went to college together. They're constantly rubbing elbows with the judges in their little elite clubs. And then they go ahead and they play these mylar swords in the courtroom and you believe that they're representing you. And as I walked or almost around the corner, I could hear them. And I stood there, God instructed me, wait. And I heard them both celebrating how they both were paid a quarter million dollars. That's a half a million dollars, okay, to get rid of me. And I went in there, they asked for 30. Now the judge can give me two thirds above that. She gave me the full 50. He gets 12%. 12% of 50 grand is six grand. That should have been 44,000. Why did I get the full 50? Because he was already paid a quarter million. But see that piece of garbage, when I walked down that hallway and I said, so you guys are celebrating the payment from a state agency with our tax dollars to get rid of me so the federal government isn't aware of the felony embezzlement of public funding back to 1989 and 1974 respectively. Yeah, 830 million owed right now if I file the quiet TAM case and I would get 25%. That's 200 and what? 7 million just on that one. And I turned it down. You know why? Because I don't want to collapse the state of California's budget. And what's coming back from Cal Fire right now were they were the reason why I've been motivated to take this slide roll, this slide roll, the top deal that goes 100 feet at a time and reduce an 800 foot hose leg. Go 800 feet right here. Got it? 800 feet. Three laterals, 269, bingo. I rotate one deal to 269. I go 260 feet of elevation, and my pressure is what? 382. How long did it take me to do that? That's live, real time. That's every freaking 100 foot length of hose. That's nozzle pressure and head pressure in less than 10 seconds to make sure my firefighters are safe by being compliant to MPA 1002, which means you don't get behind the wheel of an engine unless you can pump the water. At the, um, in, a, in a manner to create an effective fire stream at the rate of flow of whatever nozzle you choose. And yet, Bill Ty, the, um, the author of Wildland Firefighting, which the International Fire Service Training Association took his book in 2018, says, no, this will be the standard internationally in every English-speaking country in the world. That a 800-foot hose lay, at, at, um, you know, which is 382, right, is only this amount of pressure, 192. Now, if I'm 190 pounds less than what I need, what's going to happen to the nozzle pressure? Done. And every English-speaking country in the world is being taught wrong. With three pages of wildland hydraulics, when I wrote a 54-page book and set a record with the U.S. Copyright Office going back to 1777, so they said, you know, I called it five weeks. It was kind of a joke there, right? And um, at five weeks, you know, this guy goes, can I help you? And I go, please, right? This gentleman works for the Copyright Office. He says, we have to compare your manuscript to millions of manuscripts going back 245 years. Uh, duh. How long will that take? Can you give us six months? I go, I'm done, right? He says, if you hear, hear from us at five, that's really crazy. Four months, amazing. Three months is a record. I'm at five weeks. I'm a little premature in asking, did I get my copyright? You get a copyright on a piece of artwork over in seconds, right? That's different. 
Okay. So, um, anyway, essentially, and by comparison, right? Well, the next week I was hit by um, Who's Who in America again going, Congratulations, you're being nominated. I'm going, what? And then I got publishers emailing me, We want to publish your book. I'm going, What? It's not six months yet. It's only been five weeks, six weeks, right? So I did four and a half months from usual and cut the record in half from three months to six weeks because you know why? No one's going to publish a book on this because you know why? The billions felony bezel to meet budgetary needs because without budgetary needs, there's no need for safety. And that when you look at this um, for a second, I don't know how well you can see it, right? But we have to add 10 gallons a minute for every lateral. Got it? And what Cal Fire teaches today is we never add the 10 gallons a minute for each lateral offering to put the sparks out. And that gallon sprint over 100 square times, coefficient time length divided by 100 is a full 2,000 hose lay at 331. The real number is 952. The truck only produces what? 400. Got it? Okay, that's 550 pounds less than what you need. And it's a 620 pound air. See, what they teach is they go, if 2 plus 2 and 2 times 2 is 4, then 6 plus 6 is 36. No, it's 12. Is not 12 one third of 36. Is not 331 one third of 952. Essentially, it is. Got it? And in order to, yeah, get the money for a false me, a firm actually goes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, am I cutting my own throat right now with what I show what I'm doing today? Is anybody in the fire service going to want to join me? Okay, and be a guest on my show. While well, evidence what happened here. Now, what kind of time am I around? We're at 948. Okay, got it. So, you have been raped for tax dollars, for CAL FIRE, violating laws of physics back to 1745 regarding fire hydraulics. That's why my title of my book is Wildland Fire Hydraulics, Myth or Math. See, math proves itself, right? Okay, and then we've got the Department of Corrections working nine shifts a month instead of nine shifts every four weeks, violating the Fair Labor Standard Act, blah, 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 violating the very, you know, MOU contract to steal money from you, from me. And I'm a captain. I'm a peace officer. I'm a peace officer. If I don't report a crime against any victim, because I took the oath, I will protect all victims from all enemies, foreign, which means they go in the military instantly, or domestic, upon the Constitution of the United States and Constitution of California. And when I discover nine shifts a month is violating federal law, it's an instant 8 to 3 percent raise. At $30 an hour, it's $6,350 of paid time off for an extra 216 hours added to our holiday vacation sick leave no one ever sees. And the first nine shifts that we work to go from 108 to 117 pays us 10 grand. They make $45 an hour. Get over it. Okay? So, what they did was to make it right after I was, yeah, I retired with 1,800 hours of leave on the books. And they said I went on a psych disability. If it was a psych disability because I'm stressed, it would have been zero. I had 1,800 watt. I was off 22 days a month. I worked my entire career as a firefighter since I was 18. Okay, so we're getting down on the wire here. And I want to make sure that we have four and a half minutes to talk about what really happened during this accident. This is what I, what I say. Okay, I'm going to go and go full screen on here. Okay, and I want you to um, go and go jump back in here. Okay, partner. Okay, so this woman has her husband riding shotgun. What? And he's got his left hand on the wheel. Now, when he went by, and I'm gonna say, probably in a waiting highway patrolman, okay, is that they communicated, hit the throttle full blast at the other end, 3,700 feet away on the straightaway, on a back road that no one ever travels. Now, they instantly seal the road off. Are we clear? Now, no, there, now there's no witnesses. Here she is, she's driving, right? She has no idea what's coming up. She gets to the top of the hill, and he grabs the wheel right here. And she says, what the hell is going on? And then he's going right here, right? So all she can do is freak out and hit the brakes. Now the brake is, brakes are applied, brakes are applied, she's slowing down, and he steers it over to the left lane. Now meanwhile, the other truck's going 130 miles an hour, and then, bam! Now where are the skid marks right here? So they both lift up and rotate counterclockwise. Okay, so are you on the share screen, partner? Did you see that? Go back to the share screen, Michael. Okay, so why is this not coming up? Damn it. Okay, let me look at the window here. Lord God, help me. Okay, got it. Window. Window. Okay, share. 
I don't know why this got disabled. Got it? Shit. Okay, so now. Shit. Um, I need to hit play. I don't know that's doing it here. No, it's not. Okay, guys, this is really frustrating. I'm almost out of time. <sighs> okay. Um, let me go and go up here to share screen. And I just lost it again. How is that possible? See, I'm being plagued right now. Um, okay, so stop sharing. I'll go to share screen. Okay, share screen. Go to window. Go to this one. Go to share. Got it. Okay, so now, can you go to share screen, partner? Yes or no? Please go to share screen. I'm begging you. Full screen. Okay, so why is it not? God damn it. Okay. And it won't transition. And I don't know how to get the share screen to work. This is so frustrating, guys. I can't even get rid of this here. Okay, so now I'm going to go up here to share screen. Go to window. Go to this one. Hit share. Got it? So go to share screen, sir. There you go. Now I'm going to go right here. Okay, so this is the deal. Go full screen. So we're going to go back. Okay, now you guys can watch this, right? Okay, so there's links in the information below the deal, below my, uh, my dialogue, okay? All right. She comes over the hill. He grabs the wheel. Um, she begins, all she can do is hit the brakes. And she's got the brakes full blast. He's power arming her in the left, um, holding the, the steering wheel with the left hand. And then, blam, we get the collision, right? Now, there's no skid marks from the truck, okay? Now, there's a third vehicle that takes the husband and the driver, okay? From the, um, um, and drives off westbound, okay? And now they fled the scene. Got it? Okay, and so, um, do you see that share screen or no? Okay, got it. You know, this is horrendous. I don't get it. Why is this not working? Okay. Um, anyway, so the whole point is, is that they, um, let's see if I'm going like this, like this, go like this, like this. Okay, share right here, right? Okay, so now we got this right here, right? Okay, so are you share screening, Michael? Please share screen. Thank you very much. Got it? All right, got it. So that's 3,700 feet. I'm going to back up way up here, right? Okay, now we're going to hit the north, south. Got it? Back up. Okay. And so this long straightaway where this accident occurred, this truck could go 130 miles an hour down here, hit on collision right here, and then a third vehicle takes the driver, the man, right? in which um, the, um, you know, the, um, um, the, the two of them get away. So the husband gets away, the, the driver, get, but how in the world does this woman die? I would say by a lethal injection by fentanyl, right? Now, when I eluded that, um, yeah, this, this, uh, this top investigator hung up on my ass. Why he had no answers. Why? Because how in the world could I figure this out with no skid marks and that much damage to a four by four, okay? That that's what we wind up with. Okay, this is crazy. Okay, and so, um, yeah, it's like they have that level of damage, right? Well, it's because we had this length, 3,700 feet to measure, okay, from here, right? From here to here, right? Okay, so that's right about there, right? And what's that say? 3,700, got it? Okay, so um, that's more than enough room to go what? Could go fast enough to cause this level of damage, okay? And uh, we're down to what thirty seconds. All right. Anyway, I don't know how long that's been up, but um, you guys, listen. This is the technology to take the heat. 
I'm your host, Rich Hoffman, and we're coming to you live from the Bold Brave TV network. And yeah, come back next week. I hope to have more guests regarding um, a portable um, hydrant system tank that's 65 pounds, holds out like a huge caterpillar, and will carry like a thousand gallons of water so that we can actually fight a fire extended off of a trickling little brook. It's amazing. Okay, so you guys have a wonderful week. I still appreciate you. Thank you for being here.